After last week's bloodbath, it's looking like a perfect week to rebound. Welcome back to the Green Means Go channel. It's your host, me. Happy you're here. A like, a subscribe, you know all that good stuff. We're not going to get into that right now, okay, because I am so excited for this week because I see some insane potential. I mean, my stomach is turning in a good way, all right? I'm shaking already. I can't wait till 640 for that first pitch. Now, before we begin, I am drinking out of the DraftKings Yeti. I realize this is a FanDuel promotion, but we got to keep these books on their toes, right? Uh, two Keurig cups, both uh, Starbucks, one veranda blend, one breakfast blend, 80 cents at my local grocery store on clearance so that was awesome for 10 packs 80 cents for 10 packs talk about a talk about a plus ev play right there at the grocery store okay enough of that let's let's look at last week because we have to not because we want to right uh it was a horrible week um in 50 weeks of this promotion this was like a top five worst week. So um, as you can see, though, there's a lot of red in the pitching categories and in the projected home run percentage from Ballpark Pal. Uh, we only hit Evan Longoria at plus 430. Everything else, you know, was abysmal. So if we go to the tracking, right, we did take a little bit of a stumble here, but we are still up for this promotion, assuming 75% conversion of the free bets, A team, slightly underperforming B team. But overall, Okay, up either way you slice it. So we will take it, um, and, and let's hope that today will be better, and I think it has to be better. If we look at this chart, just a glance, I mean, look at this side. Are you kidding me? Greens and yellow, the conditions are excellent across the board, all right? Pitching also. You know, lots of yellow and very few red, right? When as last week, you know, I felt like we were just clustered with red. Uh, so the pitching is fine today. The conditions are fine today. Uh, I think it's going to be a great Tuesday. I do want to give you one quick thing. Ballpark Pal, who I use regularly to look at the park factors, as you guys know, if we go here, right, home run percentage increase or decrease depending on weather and stadium um, based on his uh, simulations. I still have included that here, all right? And, uh, you know, again, a great week, tons of neutral stadiums, only two stadiums that are looking like they're getting a negative you know, a heavy negative increase, and one of those is in a dome, so I'm not paying too much attention to that. However, I do want to point this out to you guys before we get started with the picks. He has a new section on his website called Home Run Zone, and if you go here, it's a fantastic tool, especially for Dinger Tuesday. I teased this last week, but it was new last week. What he's done is projected the total home runs and then the home runs per game and the home runs per team. I looked at this. I've included this in my chart. If you want to go look more in detail at it, you are absolutely more than welcome to do that. So I have just included the projected home runs uh, for the total game, total in that game that he has. So again, uh, you can only cap a max of five on FanDuel. If you hit five home runs, you get your money back in full. So this will help us kind of, again, get a better idea of which games we should target uh, along with all this other information. So I realize this is a ton of information for you guys, um, but I do think the more information, the better. You can choose to ignore the parts you don't want to look at. Um, but again, we have innings pitched for the for the pitchers this year, home runs allowed this year. So then we average home runs per inning and home runs for the first five, if they do go five innings. We have the projected home runs total in the game. We have the percent increase or decrease on home runs uh, based on his model. And then finally, my grade, what I give it, um, overall A through F. So as you can see, no Fs today, which is awesome. Um, now, how reliable is this? This is the last thing I'll cover before we get into the actual picks. I've gone ahead and tracked since this came out. He has predicted this column right here. I can zoom this in for you. Uh, he's gone ahead and predicted this column right here, dating back to you know a little over a week ago. Um, and then this is the actual that's happened. So right on, little over, right on, little over, little over, little over, actually well over right on, little over. So on average, he's projecting in the last week 30 home runs a day, and they've hit about 25. So if, again, if you look at this, it looks kind of like a Tesla logo. Uh, this The blue line is his prediction, and the red line is his actual. It follows it pretty well. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's 
yeah, it's mirroring it, which is a good sign, which tells me, you know, he's he's on the right track, uh, but he is slightly overshooting it. So if, you know, predicting 39 today, I would be happy with 33. Uh, and I think we could see around 33. But again, the week looks great. So why are we still talking? Let's get into it. First game, we got a game in Philadelphia. Um, and I'm going to I'm gonna target two guys for Detroit here. They should bat all nine innings because they are the way team. Walker's given up 10 home runs this year. We're going to go with Nick Maton and Zach McKendry, both sitting at plus 680. And both should be near the top of the lineup, we can hope. Um, you know, if we want to look at Philly guys, I don't mind Brandon Marsh. Or Cody Clemens, but they're not listed on FanDuel right now. I don't need to waste your time with that. Um, they're not wasted on FanDuel right now. So, you know, I couldn't get to them, and I didn't want to give you something to worry about uh, for later. Again, pay attention to lineups. I don't want you guys to get screwed with, with lineup funny business and then guys pinch hitting. Um, so you got to find your balance of do I want to take in now with the value or do I want to wait until lineups conferred? Maybe lose a little value, but at least know that they're going to be in the lineup. Again, something you're gonna to have to figure out for yourself. Uh, these guys, I might wait on. I don't. I think Matan may drop a little bit, but anyway. Uh, next game, we got Grinky and Lazardo. Grinky's, you know, not not the same pitcher that he used to be. Lazardo's also given up nine. I gone ahead. I've gone ahead and targeted uh, one guy for each team. Jesus Sanchez at six plus six hundred. I, I think is high. I think there's value there. And Salvador Perez. Obviously, a home run hitter at plus 420. Not a game I'm going to get to with my limited version, but if you do not have the limited version and you have the money to spare, I'd run the whole slate tonight. Truly. I truly think that you're going to see the most value returned tonight over any other week that we've had. So these are my two picks for that game. Next game, we got Louis Var Varlin and Zach Eflin, and Eflin has been on fire, so I'm avoiding anybody on the Twin City twins uh wander franco at 600 again i don't know why they're listing this guy so high uh, I, I think fair odds for this would be 450 ish and josh low at 520 i think is a good play brandon low usually a guy i get to not gonna play tonight i believe he is injured so these are the two that i am rolling with for the rays uh, another game that i think should see a lot of home run and 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 was given the rating of a b is the Sox visiting new york taking a slight risk here uh let me check when i made this video oh sorry when i was making my spreadsheet no home run yeah so still no lines listed so we're going to take a little bit of a guess here jake bowers if he is five plus 500 that's my a team play I may be dreaming a little bit on Stanton here at 400. That may be too high. If he comes in above 300, let's play him. If he's below 300, uh, let's look at Rizzo. If Rizzo's above 300, um, I like either of those guys tonight. Actually, you know, let's let's just peek so I can give you some ideas. Rizzo, Bowers. Um, yeah, I I'll tweet if I have any massive changes, but let's just roll with that for now. Um, one of the worst projected games on the slate is Arizona visiting Washington tonight. Uh, two guys, you know, uh, average pitching, but but as far as the stadium goes, it's not looking like it's going to be too friendly. Go over here, right? They're projecting a home run um, for each for each team, so not probably one I I will play uh, with the limited version. But if you want to throw throw down on your full version, I don't I don't think it's a bad idea. Pavin Smith and Keitel Marte. Both guys who, again, may go 1-2, uh, definitely top four in the lineup, uh, should get plenty of bats, at least four. So um, those are my picks for tonight in that game. This game, you know, James Caprillion has been pathetic, and that's mean, but he's been pathetic this year. So we're going to target two Pittsburgh guys, uh, Jaywan Bay at 680 and Jack Swinski at plus 400. Um, you know, Brian Reynolds isn't a bad play if you want to get to him. I, I didn't actually check his, his number, but I think that could be a pick. Um, again, kind of a neutral spot, uh, not one I'll play. I'm giving it a D just because I don't know if Oakland, Oakland doesn't have very many home run hitters on their team period. And against, uh, you know, one of Pittsburgh's best, best pitcher with Mitch Keller, I don't see Oakland hitting more than one home run, you know, and, and so, We'll see what Pittsburgh is able to do, but I don't think you get more than three in this game. This game is very interesting, Hunter Brown and Kevin Gaussman, uh, because, 
you know, it, it, they've pitched well. Both guys have some of the most innings on this whole slate and some of the fewest home runs given up on the slate. But Ballpark Pal's projecting this to be a decent night. Oh, you know, almost three home runs, neutral stadium. So kind of tough for me to handicap. I'm just going to throw a C on it because I do think there's a lot of batters in this game. Um, and, you know, maybe a pitcher gets rocked early, gets pulled, and, and we see some we see some action. So I don't think three is out of the question. I'm going to go back to Kyle Tucker. He hit one last night at these odds at 420. Uh, and Kevin Kermeyer. You know, I looked at Alvarez, of course, but I just can't dip below 300, and he's like 285 right now. So Kevin Kermeyer's hit one for us. You know, let's pay our respects to Kevin, and, and let's give him another shot at 830 here. Paxton versus Bieber. Again, Shane Bieber, another guy who had it at one time, was one of the best pitchers in the league, I would say. And now, you know, home run-wise, he's fine, but he's not been sharp on the mound in full. But again, not a great game as, and f- as far as predictions goes. And thank you for FanDuel to actually recognizing that. They're giving away some pretty generous lines, which to me tempts me a little more, right? If, if these guys are 4 on 500 and I see this number, I'm staying away. But when they are giving me 8 to 1 odds on both of these dudes against Shane Bieber, or I guess Paxton and Bieber, it's tempting. I'm not going to play it, but I think it's worth. I think it would be worth your investment. So Amon Rosario at 8:30 and Yoshida at 8:30, a guy who's hit plenty of home runs this year, going up against the righty and Shane Bieber. I switch these. All right, Yoshida's my A team. Um, how do you? I don't know. Okay, just 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 I'll I'll make that switch. But I just think 8:30 is is too generous for this guy in this spot. Flipping over to the latter half of the night, the late slate, and and really the the crown jewel of today, um, is is the late games. Gonsolin and Weaver in Cincinnati in one of the easiest parks to hit at. I mean, Ballpark Pal's projecting four home runs, three and a half home runs, twenty seven percent increase. Obviously, it's getting an A. I'm picking two Dodger guys, Altman and Peralta, four twenty and five twenty. Obviously. Max Muncy is an absolute consideration, but his odds, 255, I can't. I can't do that. I don't mind Freeman, but 320, it's pushing what I like, okay? Altman's actually dropped, and Peralta's actually <laughs> increased. So uh, do with that what you will. Um, but again, definitely a game that I would get to. Uh, Carlos Carrasco and Bryce Elder. Elder's been great this year. Carrasco, not so much. Ballpark Pal's projecting this higher than I would. Um, I don't think I'm going to play this one. But, you know, if you do, Michael Michael Harris, this is just a do factor prediction. Michael Harris is just due at 6-1. to one. Um, And Eddie Rosario at 5-1, to one, I think, are good plays for two Atlanta guys going up against Carrasco. He's given up some this year. Kyle Gibson and Freddie Peralta. Again, decent pitching in this game, one of the better pitching matchups. But again, um, Dome Stadium, so anything can happen. Um, Ryan O'Hearn is maybe not the greatest pick. Only two home runs this year. He's been hurt. Uh, Hit some for me in Kansas City last year when he played for the Royals. Uh, So this is more of a heart play. Uh, And and Yelich at 6-1, to you know, I, maybe I just need to accept that Yelich is not, you know, who he was in his MVP season, you know, a few years back. But six to one, I mean, the guy can still swing the bat. So I do think that's a generous line on a dinger Tuesday. So that is the reason we're playing that. Uh, Libertore and Dunning for, uh, you know, in Texas, kind of an interesting, you know, small sample size. I'm not paying too much attention to to these red numbers here. But Dunning at 48 innings, you know, that's 8, 9, 10 games um, without giving up a home run, um, I think is interesting. So I think you absolutely have to target Texas guys. That's what I've done. Mitch Garver and Josh Jung, both in the 480 range. Um, You know, Marcus Simeon's fine, tempting. He's on a 24-game hit streak. Um, But his odds were, I believe, something in the range of... you know, 390, um, yeah, 390. So I just, Garcia's a fine pick. I uh, you know, I just, I like to go for value in these spots just because, 
you're going to get a decent chunk of your investment back anyway. And so I like to play a little more value than anything on these days. So if they hit it, great. But a game I'm probably not going to play anyway just because of kind of the ratings I've given it and because I'm limited. Uh, okay, here we go. Colorado. We finally get another Dinger Tuesday in the Rockies. High elevation, high above sea level. Let's get some over the fence in this game. Uh, Randall Grichik at 470, a guy who's been hurt again, has just been a beast in years past, but has not really found it this year. Better, you know, what better time than now in a game like this to find it? Yastrzemski would be my pick for my B team. However, again, when I checked when I made this video, Yastrzemski is still not listed. Um, so again, uh, if he is in the 400 range, play him. Otherwise, Jerickson Profar at 750, I think, is is tremendous value for Colorado. Um, so I, I don't know what I'll do yet here. Uh, Profar is really tempting me at 750, regardless of what Yastrzemski is. You know, if Yastrzemski comes out at 600, I'll play him. 400, I'll play him. Anything below 400, I'll go Profar. Uh, game in LA will be the probably the third and final game I play with my limited version. So I'll probably play Cincinnati, Colorado, and LA. Uh, I'm going to go one from each team. Matt Th- Thais, or Thais, uh, depending on your uh, country of origin, how you say that. 750. Uh Again, value, value, value. And Nico Horner, come on, guys. 10 to 1? When, when I see a Dinger Tuesday with four numbers, right, that that, is, that, is, that speaks to my soul. Horner is not necessarily a home run guy, but in the last seven days he's hit one. In the last two weeks he's hit two. So the bat's there. He's seeing them. I think we can get four home runs in this game. So if we can do that, you know, it's worth the 7 to $8 loss that we may have just to take a shot at 250 bucks on a guy who's been playing well, probably leads off, has great conditions. Last game of the night, again, unlimited version I'd play it. Otherwise, I'm not going to touch it. Uh, I'm going to go Jared Kalinick for Seattle and Jake Cronenworth for San Diego. Uh, Cronenworth mm, hit one last night pretty deep. Uh, I had him uh, just... As a, as a personal play last night, uh, and and he couldn't get it done for me. So part of this is just if he hits one tonight, I'm going to say, of course he hits one tonight. So I want to have him just in case that happens. I do think he's still a solid play, but um, maybe a little personal bias there. Just want to warn you guys. So if you if you need another pick, if you need me to give you another one that doesn't have that bias, uh, Cal Raleigh I think is a fine spot. Um, and, you know, what's Juan Soto at? Grisham didn't play last night, so he he probably will be in. Uh, Juan Soto at 430 is actually very tempting. Uh, Cal Raleigh, um, if Ordor plays, 630 looks good. Grisham, 630 looks good. Mike Ford for a DH at 6. A lot of options here, actually. So um, for record keeping, we'll go with this, but I do think that's a decent game. So I'll zoom this out. Again, thank you guys for watching. Appreciate the support. Last week, you know, we had some crazy support. 300-some views, uh, like 11,000 views on TikTok, which is fantastic. Uh, So, again, follow, like, subscribe, all that good, good, uh, so we can keep these videos up. Um, Best of luck tonight. We kept it under 20 minutes today, which is my goal. So, uh, if you have any questions, as always, shoot me a message. As lineups come out, I'll tweet or post on TikTok any changes And again, we will see you next week. Take care and golly, let's have a night.